Yeah, that one just getting started, so we'll keep a close eye on that as well. Yeah, and Chris just scratched on that shot that we we seen. And if you want to watch that match, get your iPad out, get it on the YouTube channel, match room pool, that First is. Track. Break. Yeah, and if not, you're very welcome to stay and enjoy this last match on table one on this second day. Desislava Bozhazlova is the referee. I think out of all the matches we've seen so far on table one tonight, I think this is the most intriguing because we've got a young man who's trying to make a name for himself in the, in the game. And then we've got, well, the best lady player at the moment, Kelly Fisher. And it's a decent break. He's got a shot at this one ball. Yeah, he was beaten by Kasper Matakainen yesterday in the first round by nine racks to five. That's why he was involved in the earlier round today in this loser's phase. And won 9 0 against Marcel Price, who I think by the end wanted to throw the nine ball across the arena. He had had so many chances at it across various racks. Just couldn't get it. Never seemed to have an easy shot on it. Palovanovic was ruthless in his efficiency in that match and won it by nine racks to nil. a little bit more angle than what he's got. That would have made the next shot more natural. And that's caused a mistake, hasn't it? He's going to get away with this one. It's never nice when that happens. Kelly Fisher's going to come to the table and she's not going to be best pleased. Yeah, she beat Justin Toy 9 1 in the opening round. She wasn't far away at all from getting through yesterday to the last 64 because she was up against Mika Imminent, the 2001 champion. And only lost 9 8. gone wrong kick shot from Kelly has left Sanjin in this chance so it's chance number two on this four ball yeah that miss might have unsettled him just a bit if it ended up paying a price for us I mentioned 2001 the year Mika Imanen won the championship Kelly Fisher's opponent yesterday it was also the year Pelovanovic was born he's only 20 years of age comes from Bosnia and Herzegovina there in the southeastern corner of Europe. Won the 10 ball division at the European Championships. Almost won the 9 ball last year, lost to Joshua Filler. In an extraordinarily dramatic climax. Playing quite a bit over in the States in the early part of the year and finding some success there. He was also third in the eight ball at the European Championships. The shot before when we had a close-up, when he was shooting the ball the in the top right pocket, I 
thought to myself, he queues very close to the cue ball, and then a couple of shots later, he touches the white. Well, let's look at it again. Mm, yeah, I mean, it's very small, but it's very clear. And then you notice he puts his cue on top almost as if he's instinctively going to replace the cue ball. Knows, obviously, you can't do that. The only person getting to place the cue ball after that shot was Kelly Fisher, doing it by hand because of the foul. Well, this has been an eventful opening rack, Carl. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if he does that a lot because I did think he queues so close to the white. You get that in all cue sports, don't you? You get players who queue very close to the cue ball. And wins just the from time to time, something like that happens to them as a result. So Kelly Fisher has won. An interesting opening rack against Sanyin Pelovanovic. See some results come through there from earlier on in the evening. Jason Shaw we saw earlier. Played really well at times. 1-9-3. Petri Mackinen going through there as well. Billy Thorpe was beaten quite comfortably in the end. Didn't come here expecting very much. Torsten Homan, former champion, ending the hopes of Young American, Tyler Steyer. I was going to call him the promising American, but feels like I've been saying that for a long time about him. It's still pretty young. Imran Majid through. One of the home contingent in a Hill Hill finish. Yeah. Second rack, Kelly Fisher to break, leading by one rack to nil. So a rack that Kelly Fisher looked like losing. She ended up winning. She leads. And as a result, she's got the break in rack two. Not seen a golden break. That might just be the closest one we've seen. <laughs> she did make her name as a snooker player, but she actually started out playing pool in her parents' pub. Only switched to the larger table game at the age of 13. She was incredibly successful as a women's snooker player, and the previous generation, players like Alison Fisher and Karen Core had headed off to the States to play pool, and she succeeded them as the leading snooker player. She played in 54 women's tournament finals and only lost two of them. At one stage, incredibly, she won 36 women's finals in a row. She was world champion five times. It was a great era to be dominating that game because that was when the Women's World Championship was played at the iconic Crucible. And when she realised the women's game wasn't really going anywhere, she decided to follow her peers off to the US to play pool and has been extremely successful at it. And she's off to a successful start in this match, all helped by the unusual foul by Sanjin there where he just feathered the cue ball. Kelly doesn't hold back when she plays this game. She likes to play with a lot of authority. She thumps the ball quite hard. But it's very effective. Sanjin's going to be sat in his chair thinking I should have been 1-0 up and breaking. Yeah, and the longer Kelly can keep him there, the longer he's going to have those thoughts festering. So Kelly Fisher Thanks, leading 2-0. Omar Al-Shaheen, last year's runner-up. He's through after a close one against Michael Schneider. He's talking to Ashley. The top 64, how are you feeling? I feel uh, excited, so uh, I'm glad that I have a chance to uh, compete again. And uh, hopefully I could do my job very well and try to make it to the final again. You've knocked Michael out. How was that game? It went really a uh, tough match in the beginning, but uh, also in the end, like, because I go 8-5, then he come back to 8-7, so it's a tricky match. Uh, I'm excited that I won that much. You feeling more hungry for it now? I feel more hungry because, uh, you know, it's like a big step rest to 11 right now. I played three matches so far, so good practice too. 
So, and I get my rhythm back. <laughs> what would winning mean to you? Uh, uh, that will mean a lot, honestly. Uh, but I just want to think about uh, my rhythm and uh, my job, the job I have to do. <laughs> well, good luck and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, I appreciate it. Nice guy, Omar Al Shaheen. It was a fantastic tournament last year. One that he remembers very well, this place. Holds a special place in his heart. He didn't go on to win the tournament, obviously, but still a very good showing. Yeah, he gave a good showing in the final as well. Wasn't like he was beaten out of sight by any means. Very softly spoken, but real gentleman. gentlemen to mention of a lady Pia Filler she's 7-4 up against Bashar Hussein Abdul-Majid two racks away from the last 64 yeah and a possible clash against her husband Joshua Filler never mind Kramer versus Kramer well you use the expression sometimes in sport no love lost here I think it would never be less appropriate than in that match those two are Inseparable. Nice job done there by Sanjin. And the way the cue ball's glued up to the seven ball, that's going to make life very hard for Kelly. Whenever you cut out that short bottom rail on this type of shot. Bow in hand. Start the clock, please. Yeah, these balls are sat nice for Sanjid. So it's a good safety that's paved the, paved the way. Just see if he's moved his cue a little further away from the cue ball. Moritz Neuhausen of Germany has just completed a 9 3 win over Daryl Chia, Su Yu, to go through as well. Now, I've been talking a lot about the Americans needing new players coming through. Some of the more established names going out. One American still in with a chance of getting through is Oscar Dominguez. Very close finish in his match against Tobias Bongers of Germany. Seven all there. Fabio Petroni has just closed out a 9-6 win over Daniel Masiol of Poland. So only a few places left to be filled now in that last 64. Just landed a little short there. He would have loved to have been straight. And he's had to run into the nine ball and look where the nine's gone. So extension code. The bank. Well, you make this bank shot at a high percentage of time, but after you've messed up position, well, this is where it can go wrong. So the bank shot to win the rack and more importantly, it might just settle him down a bit because he's obviously feeling it.
familiar hush that descends over a multi-table event like this late in the evening when just the last few matches remain to be completed, including the one we're watching on the main table. Sain Pelovanovic has just taken the third rack, but it's Kelly Fisher still leading 2-1. Rack four. And the young man from Sergei Bosnia Pelovanovic and Herzegovina has the break. This is going to set up absolute delightful for the young man. Look at this for a split. Yeah, plenty of action on that. Worth another look. Yeah, played the cup break to perfection. Cue ball comes off the side rail, out into the centre. And this is your layout. Very much part of that new breed of young European talent. Of course, Joshua Filler, still very young himself. Alban Ocean, not exactly old. They're the standard bearers at the moment. But so much coming through everywhere you look all across Europe. Halovanovic was part of the Bosnia-Herzegovina team, along with Aydin Pikniac at the World Cup of Pool last year. Tough draw in the opening round, though. Beaten 7-4 by the Netherlands. Who you eventually knocked out, Carl, didn't you? Yes. Believe it or not. Something about Sanjin's game where it just makes you feel a little bit on edge. Do you have the same feeling, mm -hmm. Michael? I yeah, know. I know what you mean. I think it's the same with any player in any Q sport who's so methodical. You sort of feel everything needs to work. All moving parts have to function exactly correctly for the shot to go well. You can just throw in a miss here and there. I think that's what you're getting at. It's all gone very nicely here. Three balls off the break. Looks like a very clear chance from there. From 2-0 down, he's pulled it back now to level with Kelly Fisher at two racks each. No, I'll take He's so keen to get on with the next rack, he wanted to get the balls out himself. He's been advised to turn to his chair. Now, Chris Melling. Had a chance to close to 3-2 down against Baron Lotfi. But passed it up, ended up leaving the nine right over the pocket. Lotfi made it 4-1. I was chatting to Chris before the match. He was in very good spirits, very pleased with how he played against Dino Nair earlier today, winning 9-1. And even looking back on the match yesterday against Joshua Filler, he felt he didn't do a great deal wrong. Missed one easy ball at a key stage, and Filler just raced away from him after that. Playing a huge amount of nine ball recently and enjoying some success on the eight ball scene. And he's refocused himself on this game ahead of the World Championship. But got some work to do here. Yeah, that kick shot could have come out a lot worse. So Lotfi's not out of the woods in that rack. Chris will get back to the table, I believe. He will do so at 4 1 down. Here, it's 2 all. 
Love another break like the last one. They were sitting pretty and... He's, can he see enough of the three ball? I think he can. And if he can, he's got another chance. He's trying to get to the last 64. Reached that stage last year and played the eventual champion, Alban Ocean. Gave him a decent contest, finished 11-7. to that he knocked out Craig Osborne in the previous round Osborne who we saw in action earlier today he's got a very different physical appearance but do you know who he reminds me of a bit is Mieszko Fortunski just both quiet very determined give a sense of being very ambitious about the game Okay, nice angle now. You can either choose to just play this off the one rail and hold the cue ball, or you can come back off the second back out. He's chose to hold the cue ball. Similar story to the last rack. Multiple balls down off the break. Extension code. And, well, I was going to say he's seen it out from there. A slight tester, but you'd be very surprised if he was to miss this. Another break and run, so three in a row. And he leads for the first time in the match now the against track. Kelly Fisher at 3-2. He's telling me about the close finish between Tobias Bongers of Germany and the American Oscar Dominguez. Well, it went to a hill-hill finish. And you can see how that one reached its climax. Fairly routine, nine for Dominguez to win us. End, and he is through to the last 64. Jeremy Jones rates quite highly. He was talking about him earlier. He's already stepping it up a bit here, Pelovanovic, isn't he, Carl? Kelly Fisher's really in a contest here. And this one could run away from her quickly, the way this is heading. Yeah, he's had a couple of real generous splits off his brakes, to be honest, after making that clanger in the first, where he, he feathered the cue ball. Rack six, Sajen Pichlevanovic to break, leading by three racks to two. Yeah, Pia Phil is still going along nicely. She's just won another rack in that match. She was approaching the end, so... Yeah, I've got seven, five, lead. well, it's eight, six now, actually. It's just updated, so yeah, she has just won another rack. So Pia Phil are on the hill, one away against Bashar Hussein Abdul-Majid. It's 
So at least Kelly's going to get out of the chair now. He's got to push out. You can see a thin edge as well. It doesn't look like there's a real obvious safety shot. Push out cold. There you hear it. Push out cold. If you don't call push and you just play the shot, it is actually a foul. You must tell the referee push. Kelly Fish has now got the option. She can play this shot or she can hand it back. So what call would you make in this situation? Well, I mean, I'd, I'd like to be behind the shot to, to see it correctly, of course. But looking at that, let's have a quick look. Probably play the shot just because she's going to try and push the two over towards the three, the nine, the five. Well, I didn't like that because the two was always going to come back out. She could have played it a little softer. I don't think the safety side of pool is Kelly's strongest point. This is a chance. It's not an easy chance, but it is a small glimmer. Didn't fancy it. He's used them balls that we were kind of talking about what Kelly maybe should have used. I mentioned that Pinovich reached the last 64 of this championship last year. Well, so did Kelly Fisher. She was beaten there by Jeremy Sosai of the United States. 11 racks to five. Well, she's got a bank shot on here. Just that little window. She needs this to hold up and she'll have the hook. And she does. So that's quite useful. Sanjin's not even having a look at this shot. He's bringing his jump cue straight to the shot. Pia Filler, we were just talking about her. She's eight, six up, and she is at the table. We don't, we can't quite see what she's got, but she's at the table. Extension code. We will bring you some footage of that as it gets a little near the end. So Sanjin's trying to pop this in the top right corner. Kelly needs this two take the three, otherwise she's not going to be able to pot it. And she isn't going to be able to pot it. That's a shame. Combo is real awkward. She's down quick, so that tells me she's not playing the combo. She's playing safe. This is all about pace. If the two ball holds up, and it has done, so that's not bad. That's not bad indeed. I think she heard what you said about her tactical game and wanted to prove you wrong. Yeah, I hope I'm not shouting too loud where she can hear me. She ought to be best pleased. <laughs> Piers at the table, we did say that. She's just potted a ball, so she's in the ball. She's got a chance to win the match. Yeah, I think it's a three she's potted. Just looking at across to the other side of the arena where they are. I think she's got five balls left on the table. No, six balls, actually, it seems to be. Kelly can see an edge of this two. Can she play a billiard? and pop the nine ball. It isn't easy. She'd have to hit this two super thin and get the right contact on the nine, but it is an option. Extension She's code. digging down on the cue ball. It doesn't look like she needs to dig down to me, but let's just see. Yeah, 
and she's just kind of flattened the queue again. She's she's a bit undecided. She tried to chase the nine. How's it finished? It's not finished good. Chris Melling has turned it around a bit. Back to 4-3 down now against Baram Lotfi. Was 4-1 when we were looking in a little earlier. Yeah, never looked like he fancied that, so... This could be a bit of a chance for Fisher. Lost the last three racks, don't forget. Tough shot, it's long, it's going across table, she's got to get into the cue ball. Yeah, it wasn't easy at all. What has Kelly left? Yeah, nicely done. Played that with a little bit of left spin. I don't know if you could say the same about her performances in women's events, but when she plays at this level, sometimes Kelly just seems to let her head drop a bit. Seems to lose confidence quickly when things start to go against her. Just one or two signs of that creeping in. He would love this cue ball to bounce strong. Yeah, that's lacking pace. He wanted to be up near the centre centre line across the middle pockets, ideally. So it's, this is a little long. It's a little tester. Now, is he going to try and hold the cue ball? Or is he going to send this round the table? Actually dug into that really well. The tangent, that's a nice shot. He's going to grow in confidence as this match goes on. Starting to feel like a long time since Kelly Fisher was leading 2-0 in this match. Because it's now four in a row for Sanyan Pelovanovic. He's going too clear for the first time at four racks to two. Sanyan Pelovanovic rack. A few minutes ago, you may have heard a rather loud cheer coming from the other side of the arena. Well, we're going to see why. Pia Filler, I told you, was on the hill against Bashar Hussein Abdul Majid of Qatar. And this was her chance to close it out. She was leading 8 6 at this stage.
And it was a nice shot on the seven to leave herself this shot on the eight. That was also a good shot, big power stroke to leave herself this nine ball. You can see she's feeling that a little bit. It's a big result to qualify for the last 64. Her husband, Joshua Filler, former winner of this title, claimed his last 64 yes. place oh. yesterday. Seven. Welcome back to night two in Milton Keynes. Really Just before the break, we saw Pia Filler go through to the last 64. Can Kelly Fisher join her there? Well, she's 4-2 down at the moment, having led 2-0 against this man, Sanjin Pelovanovic, 20 years of age from Bosnia and Herzegovina. He's won four racks on the bounce, and he's breaking in the seventh. Oh, this looks another delightful break. He really has been breaking well, and he's getting rewarded with really nice splits, isn't he? He's got a nice shot on this two ball. All the balls are in open play, so there's no clusters. This is just all about cue ball control. got to think Carl with the way he plays he seems to take a lot out of himself now if he was to go on a deep run in the event is that something that's going to catch up with him eventually in terms of mental fatigue yeah maybe he obviously thinks a lot about the game and every shot you can see here by this you know the amount of strokes he's putting on the cue ball but I think it's just his style isn't it Ralph Suke he's won many pool tournaments he's very similar he looks like he keeps himself fit. Probably goes to the gym, eats well. Such a thing among pool players now. So many more of them into fitness and diet than there ever would have been in the past. Yeah, you've kind of got to do that now because like you said, the long, long days and it's not just fitness, it's the mental side of the game as well. After this, double elimination stage of the event. We're going to notch it up to a race to 11. He's short of pace there, though. He's pulled out that shot. He wanted to be well, kind of straight on this seven. Now he's going to be running into the nine. If he's not running into the nine, can he dig into the cue ball enough there? You see, that's where he's aiming. He's trying to draw this cue ball over. He's got to miss the nine and the eight. Well, luckily, he just flicked the eight, so that's worked out okay. A little bit shorter than intended. This should pose no problem, really. And another very solid breaking rack. Stretching his winning run to five racks. Already more than halfway to victory here. Now, we saw Pia Filler there just a few minutes ago, clinching her place in the last 64. Let's hear what she had to say about it. Pia, two on the bounce today. You must be so pleased with that. Yeah, I'm over the moon right now. It was like kind of my, my goal to make it to the knockout stage, but coming here, playing with all the best men in the world, it's so tough, and I'm just so happy right now that I really made it. 
There were a few really tense and very close moments in that match. How did you keep your nerve? Well, I was just trying to relax myself and thinking about what is my job, like what I got to do, like just keep my focus and concentrate and yeah, that's it. <laughs> well, you've knocked Basher out now and of course you join your partner and coach Josh in the top 64. I mean, what's next from Pia? Well, now I'm just trying to enjoy whatever comes next. It doesn't really matter. So I think it's already great to make it to the knockout stage. Of course, I still want to win, but I'm just going to keep it easy and simple and see how far I can go. Well, congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Brock eight. Session yeah, that win following on from a 9-3 victory Rocks over two. even Meng Ling earlier today. It's a great day all round for her. They've both spoken about the benefits of having a partner who knows what it's like to play at a high level and they can bounce off each other. Something you can maybe relate to, Carl. No, that wouldn't end well, Michael, I'm afraid. <laughs> I think the story of this match so far, just looking at that break shot again, is he just keeps getting the chances off the breaks and Kelly just can't get to the table, can she? Yeah, being largely frozen out. Part of what helps her when she plays in events like this, she never strikes me as someone who's coming in looking to prove a point about what women can do in a pool table. I think she just sees herself as another competitor, and that's exactly the right approach. As you say, when you're not getting on the table and getting any chance to do anything about it, it doesn't really matter what your thinking is. Yeah, he's not queued that well at all. He's hit that really poor. There's just a few shots in this match what kind of looking at him from a, a player's perspective just now and again doesn't seem Extend to hit it how he how he would like so there's a bit of a flaw going on with his cue action this is a tester he's going to be playing this into the bottom right pocket he can afford to hit fairly generous on the side rail this pocket will swallow it up. Uh, nicely done, straight in the middle. Nice shot. get the cue ball around the centre of the table. Just missed the six. This looks good as well. Oh, he just bumped the six. Still OK. He can get his hand and his cue through the nine and the six. And he's got a little bit of angle to work with. a little bit shy of pace that a little bit further down the table would have well, it just made this shot a lot more easier to hold so he's got to kill, kill the cue ball here Okay, now back where he wanted to be. Using the second rail there, pay attention to that. That offers more margin for error. I think 
earlier today when he was on his way to beating Marcel Price 9-0. Described it as slow torture. And that's very similar to what he's inflicting this evening on Kelly Fisher. That's half a dozen racks in a row now. Sergeant all very methodical, all very measured. And all very effective at the moment. 6-2 now, a very commanding lead. Oh, yeah, but now it's eight got a place oh, in the World them, Masters last year. He was beaten yeah. in the first round by Chris yeah. Melling by seven racks to four. And Melling is in action at the moment. Over on table two. He's up against it here, seven, four down against Baron Lotfi. I'm looking thoroughly disgusted with that shot. As I said, he was speaking so positively ahead of the match. Yeah, that wasn't Chris's finest moment, was it? He's a handy player, he's Barrow. It's not his full-time job. But he's got a lot of experience. He's playing. He's played in a lot of the big events. He's in with a shout of a really useful victory there against a player who you would always fancy to put in a decent run in any tournament he plays in, even though he's not been playing much nine ball recently so we'll see if Rock Chris Melling can turn that Sergeant one around break, back here Sandy Pelovanovic looks to be in total control at the moment and he's already just three racks away from victory yeah, he's done well to block that crazy foul that he did in the, the opening rack but this has been the key to his performance. It's been this break. Look, more balls disappearing. Again, it looks like he's got a shot of the three. Kelly's just got to sit there and kind of shrug it off and just think it's one of them days. It's been one of them matches. This is the brutal side of our sport. And there's the rise smile. see a player in a chair giving a smile that isn't wry. I think when you're sitting down it can only be in that category. Yeah, it's all good when it's you at the table and this is happening, but when it's not, the players always feel a bit aggrieved, but you know, this is this is the game. Kelly's done it to many opponents over the years. Unfortunately, she's on the wrong end of the stick of this one, but she's just got to hope some kind of chance just to get back in the match. Yeah, anything at all, a scratch, a ball flying off the table. That was the case, actually, in this match earlier against Marcel Price. It gave the Welshman an opportunity, which he ultimately spurned. And that is the thing when you're sitting down. All you can do is just make sure you're ready. From a mental point of view, if you do get to the table. It's been a bit of a strange match, really. He's had four break and runs. He's feathered the cue ball. But I think the, the big story of this match is just the pure, nice layouts he's been given off the break. I think anything difficult, and if it was a little bit closer, if Kelly could have got some more table time, I think. I think we could have seen a little bit of pressure creeping into his game because he still doesn't look settled to me, even though he's getting the job done, which sounds a little crazy. Yeah, but I know exactly what you mean. just think he's not the sort of player who maybe is ever going to look like that. But he's doing a job. He's doing what you need to do. And he's doing it clinically, ruthlessly, efficiently. in the last 64 of the World Championship.
Belling's dream of winning the World Nine Ball is over for this year. Baron Lotfi has just completed victory over him in the last few moments on table two by nine racks to four. Back on the main table, Sanjin Pelovanovic in total control here. He was 2-0 down against Kelly Fisher. He hasn't lost a rack since. Well, this is what Kelly needed. He doesn't have an open shot at this three ball. It doesn't go in the corner pocket past the six, so he's going to have to play safe. Could also choose to play the push, but he's obviously spotted a safety shot. So this now the last match still out there in this losers qualification round. All the other places in the last 64 now filled. Just a reminder, it goes up to race to 11 tomorrow. We get to that single elimination phase, and all the matches will be that duration from then on, except the final, which once again will be race to 13. So at last, a chance for Kelly Fisher. Really one, it would be astonishing if she didn't take. Oh, but what's she done here? That's not what she had in mind. Should be okay. Yeah, it's still cuttable. I mean, obviously, it's not where she wanted to be. But she's, you know, she's a good potter of the ball. It's going into a generous pocket as well. Cue ball will be travelling. Yeah, that's fine. Nice shot, Kelly. So finally, after losing seven racks in a row, He's troubled the scorers again. Still a long way behind, but still punching here. 7 3. Kelly Fisher Rock. Kelly Fisher is in or around 20th on the all time career money list for both men and women. Tallying up throughout the year, it's going to make a 11. huge impact on it. Kelly Fisher to break trading by three racks so to seven. So many points to be played for. Kelly Fisher then, still not out of this. Seven three down. Cue ball's been kicked. Where's it all going to finish? 
Now, can she see the potting angle? She doesn't look... She doesn't look not happy, so that tells us... Well, it tells us she can, or it's very tight. She's having a good look, isn't she, so... Ah, uh, there you see, it clearly does pot, so that's good. Kelly will know how easy the table's been breaking in this last match of the evening. And even though we've not seen much of the table, Michael, if she wins this rack and she's breaking, it's 7-4, it's she's oh. still in it. Yeah, absolutely. She's had a break and run out already in this match, actually, in the second rack. After winning the first in somewhat bizarre circumstances. I mentioned there she's in or around the top 20 all-time leading money winners in pool. Ten years ago this year, there were only three players in the world, either male or female, who earned more prize money than her. She topped $80,000. Most of that coming from two very big wins, the Women's World Nine Ball for the first time and the Women's Division at the China Open. Won the World Championship again in 2019. I mentioned her snooker successes. She also won the Women's World Billiards Championship a couple of times. So that's a pretty unique treble to have been a world champion at snooker, billiards and pool. Just turns this around quite quickly here to go from an absolute landslide situation to a position where she can still entertain reasonable ambitions of winning this match. That's two in a row now. Back to 7-4. Yeah, she'd just love to keep Sanjin off the hill. Keep him off eight. Try and close this gap. Even another break and run now from Kelly would just apply that bit of pressure back over to Sanjin. This is a big rack coming up, this one. I do believe it's the last match, Michael. Yeah, all gone quiet everywhere else. So 63 of the 64 places in the single elimination stage already decided. And this is what we're going to see when we get into that stage tomorrow. Mario He up against Pia Filler. That'll be a treat first on table one. And then Shane Van Boning still looking for this title. He'll be playing Barham Lotfi. And as we were telling you a few minutes ago, he's just knocked out Chris Melling. Darren Appleton, your mate. He'll be up first on table two against Thomas Rock Kaplan. 12. And then Joshua Filler okay, will be break. playing the winner Ready. of this match. Second on table two. Tell you what, Carl, you look at the matches we've got coming up there tomorrow and some of the names and some of the players. It's enough to make the mouth water, really, about what lies ahead over the next few days. Well, she's going to have a shot at this two ball. She wants that seven ball to get away from the cue ball. That's going to make queuing a lot easier. Let's have a little glance at this table layout. We've got a bit of action going on here now from 7-2. She needs to play a good positional shot to get on the purple five after this shot. She actually made three balls on the break there. That's how generous this table's been breaking. Maybe it's down to our referee. Good racks. This is the key shot. This is the key shot. She needs to miss the five. She'd like it to keep running. She's already played a similar shot to this a couple of racks ago. This is the biggest shot of the match for me now. Can she pop this five and get on the six? Got to avoid the scratch. Needs the cue ball to slow down. This is nice. This is nice indeed. Yeah, that's spot on and... She's starting to look like she fancies the job here. The match looks to be petering out at 7-2. If a match can peter right back in, that's exactly what's happening.
Oh, she's found the side pocket. That is criminal. Oh, no. Stop Kelly block, Fisher. Please. Yeah, and that really halts the revival, doesn't it? Because looks 8 4 all over now. And you were talking, Carl, about the importance of keeping Pelovanovic off the hill for as long as possible. Well, it doesn't look like she's going to be able to manage to do that any longer. Yeah, that shot there is going to come back to haunt Kelly because that, well, that would have just applied the pressure. Instead, she's pretty much gifted Sanjin. I want to say the match, but 8-4 is a good lead. Sanjian from Ivanovic, 8-4 it is. What a mistake by Kelly Fisher. Yeah, and it looked for all the world like it was going 7-5, and what a huge difference there is. Let's hear now from another one of our winners. Nicholas, have you caught your breath? You look so pleased with that. <sighs> I'm, I've been shaking, actually, to tell you the truth. It was 7-6. I'm running out, and I missed a straight and nine ball. And that puts him 7-7, and he breaks, pushes out, and I make a credible out, and then I break and run. I'm shaking my whole last three balls, I'm not gonna lie. It's my first event, first top 64 I've ever, you know, and I'm just really happy to be here, and just, I'm just glad I got out. <laughs> How do you stay focused? How do you stay in the game? Positive, um, I'm here to have fun, uh, about, you know, around the best players in the world, so it's very, it's just, is really overwhelming yes yeah for <laughs> sure but i mean i got here i got out and i'm just thankful and blessed to be here so and this is one of your first matchroom events how are you finding everything <sighs> it is overwhelming but um you have to keep cool and you have to think positive and just Prep go 13. you belong here just like everybody else so but yeah it's break, um, i'm just overjoyed four. You're in the top 64. How does that sound? <laughs> that sounds amazing. And there's a lot of more pool to have to, to come in. I just am so looking forward to everything else. So, Well, enjoy celebrating. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. <laughs> oh, I love to see that from Nicholas de Leon after his win over Tolian Han. By nine racks to seven earlier. A few tears in his eyes there. and Just enjoying it all so much. And that's what a big field global event like this is all about. Yeah, that was a nice interview. He should be very proud of himself. He's in, he's in the hat. He's in the last 64. So will Sanyan Palavanovic be there as well in the next few minutes? does finish it off here, Carl. What do you think he'll make of his performance overall? I think he's played OK, hasn't he? He's done what he's needed to do. He's not done anything amazing. All the balls have been quite kind. Well, he actually missed that three ball, but it went in. He's going to have to up his game, though, a little bit if he wants to go real deep in this event. Of course, we're not going to know who he's going to play just yet in the last 64, but at some point he's going to come up against one of the proper players. Kelly Fisher got off to a good start. She was swamped for seven racks in a row. Staged a bit of a revival and was threatening to turn it into a full bone fight back and then scratched at a key moment.
Sanyin Palovanovic has seen it out from there. Comfortable winner in the end. By nine racks to...